imagine that uh, like basically what what we are doing is like for example we are comparing set of all natural numbers with zero and set of all natural numbers without zero. Let me let me show it like mirror it like this. Yeah. So um, and we have we have the following following mappings. Yeah. So f from here is fx is equal x plus one. We are going to assign the, the next the, the consecutive element of, of the of the, uh, of the the following element of the, of the natural numbers. Yeah. And in the opposite direction, we are going to take the constant function fx. Okay, gx is equal to x. Yeah. So something something like this. So now how how does the graph look? So the elements of of the graph are a elements, which are natural numbers with zero, like this, and then we have black elements, which are natural numbers without zero. One, two, three, four, like this. Now, yeah. and um, now we should we should add. Um, edges between them. So first we are going to add f edges, which is from every element to the following element. So the blue f edges are going diagonally like this. Now we are going to add green edges, which are from black to white, and they always go to the same element, so they go like this. Yeah. So now we have something which is infinite path. Yeah, the path starts at zero. Nothing is going to zero. Nothing maps to zero, and we have infinite path path like this. Yeah, so meaning that zero is the only special special vertex here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and this is this is like. Uh, the only situation when when uh, we can create some vertices of, of in degree um, in degree zero, it has to be start of some of some infinite infinite path. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, so now we have we have uh, we have this path and we have also uh, we have also seen cycles so. We have a graph which is which is very simple. Our degree is exactly one in degree at most one, and also it's bar by tight. So now we should ask uh, how t how can the graph look like? It, it can be it can be so difficult. It can be so complex. Uh, so so what are like some basic basic structures in in the graph? Okay, so what we can have we can have even cycle. Huh? And so it it may look like this. Like hmm. now, let's let me let me draw six cycle. Yeah, which is from white to black. Now, yeah. so like this. Yeah. So uh, so this is this is some kind of some kind of example uh, we have seen before. Now, yeah. we can also have um, infinite paths. Yeah. We already uh, we can already see it here. Yeah. So this is this is an example of, of infinite path. And this is like one way path and we can also with like infinite two way path. Now yeah. meaning that every Meaning this is this is uh, something which which like very uh, like uh, non precisely you could call it infinite cycle. Meaning, imagine that you like cut the point here and it goes. You cut here, it goes to infinity. Yeah. So, but I I think like two way path is uh, is uh, much better much better name to us for it. So what does it mean? We have element and it has some some um, and the blue arrow is going to some other element and then green arrow is going somewhere and so on 
yeah, this is white, and, uh, and this is black, and, and so on. Yeah, so we create an infinite path here. But now the question is, okay, uh, is there some green arrow going to this element? And we w we take a look there and we say yes, yes, there is there is some green arrow going to this element. Is there some blue arrow going to this black one? Okay, it is. Yeah. And we proceed in this way, and we always find that there is something after the path, on, uh, like following. Uh, also, also there is something before. Yeah. So this is like infinite from the both of ways. Like imagine, for example, ordering of uh, whole numbers. Yeah, it doesn't have minimal elements. There is always one element larger and always one element smaller. Yeah? So it goes to the both sides till infinity. Okay, so and we can always like like identify one of these three structures. There is nothing else. And you could you can prove it uh, in the way that like you t take one your favorite element and you start to follow the arrows from this element and either after some time you will return back and you're done or you start to follow from uh, this is probably a better picture from uh, let's say this element you start to follow the arrows and you will never stop but now you can't say okay i am done I don't need to, uh, this is this is one way infinite path. No, you uh, will go uh, on the op uh, like uh, on the opposite directions of the arrows. Yeah, you will go you will go against the arrows back from the element, and either after some time you will stop. We'll say I can't go further, so this is one way path. But from here, not from here, yeah. Or you will also like proceed to infinity, and you will obtain two way path. Huh? So um, these are the only only structures we can occur in the in the graph. Nothing else can can be can be found there. Okay. So um, and this is um, this is now very simple. We just need to um, do some some matching on on the on the on, on these on these structures. And if we are able to like pairs pairs elements of these structures we will be able to pair all elements in into in the uh, in this in these two sets. Uh, and pairing is what we need. We need to construct a bijection. So if we have an even cycle, we pick our favorite color, for example green one, and we will just pair the elements connected by green arrow. Yeah? So in this case this will be one pair, this will be another pair, and this will be the last one. Okay, we have infinite one way path. And we will start with the with the first element, and pair it with with the following element. So in this case, we have to we have to choose uh, the blue color. Yeah, before that, we could we could pick uh, our favorite color. Now we have to choose the blue one. Yeah, so we will pa we will pair zero and one. Now we will pair one and two. We will pair two and three, and so on. We will pair according to Bukhar. And always to some element there has to be made because this path is infinite. Yeah? And if we have a two-way infinite path we can again pick our favorite color, for example again the green one. We can pair like this. Yeah? So and um, using using this we will obtain the, the matching and we will obtain the bijection. And that's, that's basically it. Yeah, so so this is this is a uh, proof of, of the of the famous Bern Kantor, Kantor's uh, Bern, uh, sorry uh, uh, Bernstein Kantor's uh, theorem. Okay, so so this is um, this is like one one important thing. So um, yeah. because because like uh, today's today's episode is already like pretty long. Uh, I will probably like, like show you only uh, one example, and then we will we will stop there and we will we will continue in uh, some other some other time. Okay. So let me let me show you uh, like last example for today, but there there will be definitely like a continuation of this, which will be probably slightly more interesting. So so what about um, let's say natural numbers? And whole numbers. Yeah. So 
which is larger. And so, like the first thing you could think about is like, okay, so natural numbers are a subset of who numbers, yeah, meaning that um, natural numbers are like s are smaller than who numbers. Yeah? Like this, because uh, like if we have subset, we have also we have also um, injective mapping, basically as as before. Now we can like if uh, we can just map x to x to x. This is clearly injective, and it's a correct mapping from n to z. Okay, and also n like z, uh, n is mm, like. Uh, how to how to denote it the best way? Z minus n is non-empty. Yeah, there are, there are still some elements missing in finite, really many of them actually. But what does it what does it mean? Yeah, it's very simple. So we could say okay, so there are still some elements missing. Meaning, who numbers have more elements than natural numbers? Meaning, who numbers are larger than natural numbers? You could say it like this and. Um, you could be happy about it, but it would be wrong. Yeah, so, uh, meaning we were just not able to construct mapping uh, to the other way, but it does not imply that the mapping uh, does not exist. Yeah? So, it, just because you're uh, not clever enough to, to find the uh, correct mapping doesn't imply that, uh, that it doesn't exist. Yeah, there is no argument like I, I tried enough, so it it can't exist. And this is this is one of the one of the beautiful things of, of mathematics. So I don't think it's it's so bad. But um, okay, so we have natural numbers and we have whole numbers, and um, so we can either like uh, construct um, the mapping from the other way, or, or we can like construct the bijection directly. So um, I don't know which which way is like better for you, but um, probably we, we can construct the bijection right away. Actually, actually like the the, Cantor, the Cantor's Bernstein uh, theorem will be will be used uh, more next time. But I, f I think like uh, it's not like uh, you don't need it that much because if you like uh, in most of the cases if you're able to prove like uh, these two things you are also able to construct the bijection directly. But it's let's say a nice property and I really like the the proof using using graph theory. Okay, so so what we are going to, going to do here is to, to step aside and instead of of n and z. Continue uh, consider n and um, something uh, and uh, let's say a set of all set of all even numbers. Yeah, so n and n e set of even numbers. Mm -hmm. And we are going to compare them. Which one of them is larger? Yeah. And so once again we could use the similar procedure as, as here, but it would be again wrong. And what we would like to show is that they are of the same size. And similarly if you consider set of all odd numbers. Yeah, they are the same size. So how to do it? We can just like imagine that we are uh, looking for some matching between them. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Yeah. And we have 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on. Like this. So what are we going to do? Is we are going to match two smallest numbers like this. Yeah, we remove them away. Forget about them. And we have uh, like uh, matched one pair. Okay, so we take again two smallest numbers, one and two. Put them away. We take two smallest numbers, two and four. Put them away. We take two smallest numbers, three and uh, three and six. Yeah. And we once again uh, put them put them away. And we proceed like this. 
So after a finite number of steps, we get to any number up there, we get to any number down there.